Hey, it's Kevin. Happy holidays, everybody. Um, I just hope you're doing well. I hope everybody is healthy, being safe, staying away from those parties, even the, the three and four people ones with, you know, Grandma and uh, Aunt Sally and this and that. Keep it cool. Keep quarantining the calmer waters or are up ahead. So, um, I decided that I haven't really given you guys some good good hat content in a while. You know, I've been busy doing this and doing that. So today, um, I just rolled out of bed. You can see I have like no energy and stuff. Uh, I got the wrinkled shirt and unshaved, you know. But I'm going to attempt to do, you know, a song for you. Another Bruce Springsteen song off his first album, which is, um, for some reason, I, I, I don't know, I kind of, I like singing it. I like his singing style. He's in my range and stuff. And I've always found that his writing is like the hardest stuff to sing. For me, it's just one long tongue twister. So, um, I like to challenge myself because I never really consider myself a singer. And uh, it's my uh, New Year's resolution to just keep trying and keep, you know, banging away at it. And, uh make my voice stronger and more confident and uh, you know, just get better at it, you know, rehearse it, practice it. But it is my tradition not to rehearse any of these songs uh, when I do it here. So that's why you always see lots of mistakes and me reaching for the chords and stuff. Um, I just do that via tradition. So we're going to try this one. I haven't, uh, I haven't even run through it. This is, I think, the hardest of all of his songs, uh, Blinded by the Light. And then I'm going to show you guys um, just about everything you need to know about uh, Fedora's dress hats, um, felt, you know, lightweight felt hats. I'm not talking really westerns, but it does apply to westerns. Uh, you know, if it's got a snap brim like an open road, then, you know, it kind of applies. Um, and most of the uh, things that apply for felt are universal, depending, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a girl's hat, a boy's hat, a lady's hat, a men's hat, or a dog's hat dress hat or western, um, it's felt. Felt is felt and it's all treated the same way. Um, it loses its shape when it's wet and you leave it in the wrong way. You know, you have to kind of almost let it float, you know. So when it, when a hat is wet, you put it back in its, put it back in its original shape. What I do is I open it, mm -hmm. you pop it, get those creases the way they were intended. See, fix this here. Okay. Then you hang it. You let it float. Any way you leave it, it's going to dry that way. So if your brim is a little messed up, fix the brim, okay? And it will dry that way the next day. There'll be no surprises, okay? Um, same thing across the board for Western hats, whether it's felt hats or Western. So and we'll try to sing something, uh, and then we'll get right into the, the little lesson there and stuff, okay? That man drunk bombers and in the sun the teenage diplomat in the dumps with the mumps and the adolescent pumps is way into his hat with a boulder on my shoulder feel a cow trip the merry-go-round with his very own sprees and sneezing and wheezing the calliope crash to the ground some old shot, half shot, is heading to the hotspot, snapping his fingers, clapping his hands. And the flesh pot mascot is tied to lovers, not what not in her hand. And that young Scott with a slingshot, trying to find a tender spot, throws his lover in the sand. And some food, some food. Good shot, forget me now. Whispers, that is with an ear shot. Save the buckshot, turn off the band. She was blinded by the light. Cut loose like a deuce in the middle of the night. Blinded by the light. She got down, but she never. She got down, she never got tired. She gonna make it. Some brimstone, baritone, anti-cycle, monster, preacher from the east. He says they throw the dictaphone, hit me by the bone. That's where they expect at least. 
And some new moon chaperone was standing in a car alone Watching the young girls dance And some Watching the young girls dance And some fresh stone moonstones Blessing his frozen zones Reminding the feeling of romance He was blinded by the light Loose like a deuce in the run in the night, blinded by the light. You got down, but you never got tired. I'm gonna make it tonight. Let's put the green ring on. Let's pull this out now. Some silk old sister with your manager, mister, told me that God would takes. She said, I'll turn you on, son, into something strong. You play the song with the funky break. And go car, Mozart was checking out the weather chart. See if he's safe to go outside. And a little early pearly came in a curly word. And asked me if I needed a ride Some hazard from my road was gone on beer Clean back your bomb the deer Yes, the Scotland Yard was trying hard And sent some dude with a calling card He said, do what you like, but don't do it here This is verse 5 Well, I jumped up, turned around Spit in the air, fell on the ground Asked him which way he was back home he said, take a ride, good life, keep going straight to night, and then boy, you're on your own. This is verse 6, maybe I should give up here. And now there's a bar shooting star, was riding a sidecar, humming on the moon of two. Yes, and that avatar said, blow the bar, but first remove the cookie jar, we're gonna teach you to and laugh too soon. And some kidnap handicap was complaining And I caught the clap from some mouse drive you bought last night And I unstabbed his skull cap between his ears I saw a gap and I figured he'd be alright He was just blinded by the light Cut loose like a douche and running out Blinded by the light To look into the sadness of the sun, but one mama, that's where the fun is.
installing because it's so early. Yeah, I kind of feel wrong, like I didn't get my coffee yet. I felt like I gave, I owed you guys some good, uh, good content because uh, I, you know I've been busy doing this work and that work and running the house and shopping and getting the, the meals done and cooking and making music videos, making comedy videos uh, daily with my son, editing them both, um, doing all kinds of stuff, returning lots of comments and emails. Uh, I'm not really complaining, but that's basically the reason why I haven't been doing comments. Um, you know, life is good, everything's good. Busy, busy is good. Rolling Stone gathers no moss, right? Now, let's talk about felt hats a little bit, everybody. Now, um, maybe you're a guy who has never, ever had a felt hat before. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna bring you guys closer so I can sit down on my Marshall lamp. Get intimate with you guys, okay? Let's just talk about this, okay? Now look, there's, I'm gonna say there's the short brim look, the medium brim look, and the, the classic look, which is the big, you know, full brim look, and then there's the oversized look. So there's kind of like short, medium, large, and extra large brims. Small, medium, large, extra, okay? This, I'm gonna call this a medium brim, it's a two inch brim. The classic, classic, classic size brim is like a two and a half or a two and three eighths. That's what I usually wear. You see me wearing my green hat all the time, this pink hat, this this brown hat. Um, two and three eighths inch, this is, this, that's in Temple. Temple is a simple hat with just a, a raw edge. Okay, there are different types of edge treatments. So that's, that's a raw edge. Now, a raw edge is basically mm -hmm. when they take your hat and the edge of the brim is just cut, almost just like a scissor, you know? It looks sharp and it looks kind of expensive to people because when they buy the cheaper hats, like, you know, the stuff that's uh, less money, they tend to have this sort of folded over edge called a welt, which is very thick and puffy looking and it's not sharp like this. So people associate that sharp look with expensive hats. The truth is the raw edge is pretty much, you know, the most vulnerable edge there is to like, you know, losing its shape and it's, you know, it's just cut with a scissor. There's no, when it's not like folded over and welted, it's less strong. Um, the premise, you know, the idea is that it's better felt so it doesn't need to be welted, but um, it's all a style thing. The welted edge is a little more old fashioned, like a Frank Sinatra or 40s or 50s type of hat. The raw edge is a little bit more modern and European and clean looking. It looks a little more sharper, GQ and stuff to some people. Um, it is, it's fashionable looking. Sometimes they put a little stitching on the end to make it look even sharper. They call that a whip stitch. This is a bound edge binding, where they put ribbon usually to match the band. Bound edge is uh, a little more nostalgic looking, more custom looking, you know. It's kind of a 40s look, gangstery, 40s, 30s kind of a thing too. Then you have shapes. The shape of the top, there are two basic shapes, okay. There is the teardrop, for obvious reasons. It's shaped like a teardrop when you're looking from the roof, bird's eye view. And the center crease, which is just what it sounds like. It's when you just crease it. You take, you know, an open hat and you just make a crease and it's simple. On average, the teardrop is lower, okay? It's got a lower profile. The center crease is sort of higher. The reason is that when you want to lower a hat, what you do is you teardrop it, okay? You want to take all this stuff in the back and lower it and tuck it down into itself like this. It becomes a teardrop, okay? Center crease has got a little bit more meat up in this area where the teardrop, it, it goes down in the back. So you, you bring it down, and obviously this is banging into your head, so you got to bring the center up in the middle so you have room for your head. So that's where the little bubble in the inside comes. Otherwise it would be down and there would just be no depth for your head. So the teardrop is a lower shape, but it also looks more nostalgic. It looks like a 40s shape. It's old-timey looking. 
You know, if you remember that black and white TV show Superman, you know, everybody had those hats. You know, the reporters and stuff. Gangsters, reporters, good guys, bad guys. And they had a lot of teardrops. The teardrop looks very cool and kind of like that old film noir, uh, art deco -y looking stuff. Where center crease is just simple, elegant. The shadows are very simple. It has more curves to it. Every line is graceful, you see that? The lines are round and graceful. Where a teardrop, the lines are more blocky and square. See, it's a square. See how that's a square shape? This has more of like a kind of a M on top. This looks flat on top. The sides here are straight up. They're blocky. These are more kind of round, like a graceful M. Um, teardrops have a certain nostalgia to them. They're really cool. And they're good too if you don't like a high hat. Center crease is good if you just like, you know, very simple, kind of a 70s, 60s, 70s look. Um, and you're not like really that into the whole kind of, you know, 1940s, like film noir thing, whatever. Um, now, there are other shapes too. You know, flat tops, pork pies, telescopes, all kinds of shapes. But those are the two main ones, teardrop, center crease. Now, let's get into straw versus felt. In the summer and the spring, okay, when it's hot out, you generally want to buy a straw hat because your felt is made out of fur. The good stuff is fur. The cheaper stuff is wool. They use wool to keep the price down, basically. But uh, when it's, you know, 80 degrees out or whatever, sunny, people are wearing t-shirts outside and polo shirts, you cannot wear a hat that's made out of fur on your hand. You're going to be sweating especially when it's 80, 80 degrees, 90 degrees, uh, talking Fahrenheit, guys, when it's, you know, very hot. And, you know, even hotter than that, you need a straw. A straw will protect you like an umbrella. It'll shade you, but it's a porous, natural material, like a brass. It's lighter even than a cotton. And what's better than cotton is that you can reshape these. When these hats get out of shape, you could steam them and put them back in shape um, over and over, just like you can with the felt. Um, you could steam them back, you could reshape them, you could change the band. For a cotton hat, generally, you know, it gets sweaty, you know, you could try to wash it, but I don't know, most people don't. Straw hats are very, very light. They are not rainproof. There are many types of straw. One of the famous ones is Panama. Panama is a type of straw. It's also, you know, people say a Panama hat, they think of that, you know, that kind of off-white hat with the black band, you know, like, sort of like uh, that look, you know, like a... But a Panama is actually a hand-woven type of straw. You see the concentric rings? Somebody started in the middle here, and they wove it out, 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 out by hand. Okay, then later it was dyed black. This is Panama straw. It comes from Ecuador. Panama does not come from Panama, it only comes from Ecuador. Okay, it's woven knitted. Like when your aunt knits a sweater, it's just like that. But they use straw. It comes from a plant called the Tokia plant. Tokia, with that little thing over the L's. Tokia. So anyway, they dry the stuff and they, they knit it into like a hat body, kind of like a mat. Later on, it's shaped on wooden blocks. Usually in other places like the United States, Europe, they turn it into a hat. But uh, they do make hats in Ecuador too. They're known more for making the straw though. Um, generally, if a company like Stetson or a better company, they won't have hats made in Ecuador, just the straw. They make them themselves. But nobody on the planet makes Panama except the Ecuadorian sea. That's where you get it. It's a handcrafted thing. It's elegant. It tends to have a cream color usually. It could come natural cream. It could come bleached, which is like an eggshell off-white. Or it can be dyed like this. They could dye it in any color. It's light. It's very light. It's flexible too. And it's a good all-around type of straw. Straw is not for the rain though. It's only for the sun. That's it for hot weather. Um, that's why you have your felt hats. Those are rainproof and stuff. Um, 
there are different types of straw. This is one that has a, a stretchy, kind of a flexible nature. It's hemp. This is like pure fiber. It's very, very strong. You can crush this stuff. You know, has no effect on it, <coughs> even when you drop it. Um, hemp is um, very, very strong stuff. It's not going to crack and split the way your Panama hats would. I don't recommend doing this, but uh, when your hat starts getting older and more flexible, it will take it. The idea is that you don't have to roll it, but if somebody squeezes it, it's not going to split or crack like Panama can. Now, generally, um, that flexibility is its strength. Generally, people make the same mistakes. They keep their hats on the brim like this, and they pick it up in the same place every day by that little point. Panamas tend to have a lot of cracks right there because everybody's grabbing it, picking it up off the table, picking it up off of this, in the same place thousands of times. And that becomes a handle for them. It also becomes a weak, weak spot in your crack. You buy something like hemp, it is heavier than Panama. You know, there's, there's some weight to it. Listen. You know? It's heavy. Um, I mean, heavier. Most people love these. They have no complaints about it, but uh, it also has a leather sweatband. That's most of the weight. Leather sweatbands will allow you to dry the leather to, you know, keep it dry. It also blocks perspiration. It keeps it from staining your head. Um, keeps you comfortable, but it also adds some weight. It's a trade-off. If you have a ribbon sweatband, it'll be way lighter, but you'll sweat right through there. So, when it's, you know, summer, you got to think about that. Um, now, do you need a straw, do you need a felt? So the felt season is generally much longer um, in New York, but if you live in the, you know, the desert in Arizona, you might use uh, straws all year long and you don't even need a felt. Felt is rainproof, felt keeps you warm. Um, so it depends on your climate. I'm gonna say most people's climate, they need felt most of the time, and the straw season in New York is very short. You know, it's from like, uh, I don't know, mm -hmm. maybe, May, June, July, August, maybe a little September, we would say four or four and a half months, where, yeah, it's, it's like an eight month season for, for felts. So we tend to do more felts in New York. And, you know, when you get into hats, then you progress and you get yourself a straw. So you can wear them all year long. Um, what else can I say about hats? Now, the most basic thing thing about a fedora is the brim has a snap. It's what we call a flange. There's kind of a curve to it. That little curve is called the flange. It allows it to snap. Common problem is that hats get too soft from us leaving it on the brim. It makes this shape droop. And that curve of, this, of the flange droops and there's less snap. So when there is bad snap to a hat, most of the time it's because, you know, we did it. Um, we abused our hats. Other times it's because the hat just is, you know, it's just the way they made it. Uh, it wasn't made with a great snap or something like that. The, um, all you can do is keep your hat off its brim. Don't put weight on the brim. You hang it or you put it upside down or you put it in the box. You don't put it on the brim. Keeping it on its brim will make that flange get wavy. You're going to lose the snap to the hat. And you're going to lose the shape to it. It's going to get soft quicker. And you're going to grab it in this area every time because you're setting yourself up for that. So you'll, you'll mess up the top from grabbing it. You'll mess up the bottom from having weight on it. Keep your hats upside down. You'll pick it up not in one place, but in many, many places. And the brims will last you indefinitely. And you won't wear a hole through here because it's over there. So. Um, that's where I say just keep your hats off the brims. Keep them upside down, upside down in the box, hang them, you'll be good. Um, as far as reshaping them, I'm going to say um, it's good. Maybe send them to JJ Hat Center once a year if your hat is out of shape. There are people who don't need a reshaping for 20 years. There are people who need it twice a year or once a month. Um, average, I'm going to say most people probably need a good reshape in between once a year and maybe once every three to five years, depending on how good your hat is and how bad you are to them, you know. Um, me, 
I have access to steam all the time. I tend not to steam my own hats. I steam other people's hats. But I'm also very... I'm not picky about the way my hats look. I just sort of... I don't really care as much. Um, well, they're my two green hats. I do baby those. Those are the only ones I do. I always feel that, you know, if I have a hat that's decent quality, I'm always one steam away from making that hat absolutely perfect and mint again. So, I don't worry about it. If the hat has poor felt and doesn't respond well to steaming, then, well, you know, you're screwed. You keep uh, steaming it and steaming it and nothing works. Um, most likely the hat needs more stiffener, it needs to be reblocked or something like that. But you can't do anything, so you just accept it and let that hat lose its shape. That's all I can say, you know. Um, you do the best you can. Some hats are going to look better, some hats are not going to look better. It's just the luck of the draw. Um, we see a hat at JJ's that doesn't respond well to rain or steaming or whatever. Then we just discontinue it and we sell it out at half price. So if you're buying something from our back room and you're worried that the brim is curling or something like, well, you got it at half price. It's probably why we blew it out. Um, most of them are just kind of discontinued styles, but sometimes, you know, that's the deal. We don't repeat a, uh, the same hat, no matter how successful it is, if it was faulty. Like, um, people really loved the Stetsonian and they wanted more and more and more of them, but the brims uh, had pretty, um, like, almost no snap to them. They even came in pretty much flat. They were just oversized. Uh, they came in a little too big. They didn't snap well. The crown was amazing. It was like the nicest crown like ever for a vintage fanatic, but there were issues with the So we blew them out at half price. Now everybody still asks for them, but uh, we refused to get them because we were unhappy with the model. So we do other things. You know, we have our Fulton. We might be getting something new from uh, a Kubra, the Federation 4, which is uh, probably one of the nicest uh, vintage style crowns and quality felts out there. Um, I've already made the request to the boss, and, um, you know, there are other options. So, you know, if you're realizing that uh, we're not selling something anymore, it's either that Stetson ran out of the felt and it's not offered anymore, or we don't like the hat. There are many hats like that. Some hats are really super, super comfortable and light and rollable, but they can't take a drop of rain. There are other hats that do fantastic in rain, but they're super hard and heavy. You know, not every hat has everything, but uh, if a hat doesn't perform up to our specs, it's just out the door. We say, you know, nice relationship with you, but, you know, later, and it's gone. Um, we don't want to take uh, returns and exchanges and... Uh, we have a reputation of selling good stuff, you know, higher end stuff. And um, if it's high end stuff that's faulty, then, you know, we just don't want it. Um, now, every hat maker makes good stuff. They make stuff that is not so successful, too. Um, it doesn't mean they're a good brand or a bad brand. It means they tried something, we didn't like it, and then it's gone. So that's all. Um, I'm going to say, you know, just because, like, uh, you know, Fiat comes with a crap, comes out with a crappy model, doesn't mean all Fiats suck. Um, it's just like that. There are a lot of really good models and a lot of models that we just don't really care for. So one thing to do is look for models that I suggest. Like, if you see me doing videos on the Cyrus, on the Whippet, on the, uh, the Madrid, the Seville, the Ken, um all these hats, the Morgan, the Asher, know that Kevin is putting his reputation behind it. My 25 years, you know, for behind every single hat that you guys wear. And I'm saying it's good, you could buy it, I stand behind it. Um, yeah, maybe there'll be a loose thread here or there or whatever, but the hat is good, there's no issues with it, you know. Um, you know, every hat comes in sometimes with a little loose hat thread coming out of the band. What happens is there's threads that come out of each one of these and, and somebody is paid to cut them, to trim them. So sometimes they trim them fast. So there's little like quarter inch pieces of like nylon invisible thread sticking out. That's not really faulty. That's more like, we just gotta trim it with a nail clipper, you know? Things like that we ignore, but um, Things like curling brims and uh, 
you know, whatever. It's, you know, when hats just don't perform well, um, you no know, snaps and things, yeah, they, they go in the sale rack. Now, um, let's talk a little bit more about the different brim sizes. All right, the common brim size is like, I'm gonna say, um, two and three eighths, which is like the green hat I wear, a little bigger than this one, and two and a half. Here's a two and a half. These are the more very, very classic brim sizes. You know, when you think of a classic fedora, fedora guy, or whatever. Your two and a half inch is something like this. That's your classic, you know, hey, Bogart kind of thing, you know. Uh, two and a half, the temple. Whip it two and three eighths. My green hats are like the Seville. That's the same shape. Two and three eighths. Two and a half. It's uh, the classic width. Now that is a great width to start with. Um, this is sometimes even nicer. The two inch. The two inch is what Sinatra used to wear. It's a little more subtle. It's less costume like, less gangster like, less reporter like, and it's a little bit more like authentic. You know, you wear it with an overcoat or with a suit or whatever, your jeans, and you look like, like real deal, laid back. I ain't trying too hard. I got a toothpick here. I'm like, yo, what's up? Hey, puppy, let me get, you know, a couple of uh, now and laters. Uh, let me get a cup. Let me get a pack of cools. And uh, no, actually, let me get one Lucy, two cups, and some um, watermelon now and laters. All right, puppy, thank you. You just look like authentic. Shorter brims are more laid back. It's like you've aged a little and you realize what's cool now, you know. You're, the young guys wear the big brims, you know, like, er, big brim. It's laid back. It's cool. Two inches cool. Now, for me, with my big puffy hair coming out, I don't always wear the two. When my hair is tied back like this, I, I do. Um, it looks good on me. So I generally wear a big brim because of that. But uh, I like the two-inch brim look. The Stetson Saxon, the, uh, the Cordoba, which is on sale, the uh, Ken, which is gorgeous. I did a video on the Ken lately. These are all two-inch brim hats, so uh, really good. A little bit smaller than that is um, the short. This, this is the medium brim look. Smaller than that, we're going to one and three quarter inch brims, which is like the Asher. What did I do with my Asher? I'm not wearing it. Okay. Up here. Okay. All right. The Asher is a one and three quarter. Okay. It comes in, in felt. It looks way nicer in felt. Trust me. Um, I'm going to say the Asher is a really good hat for people to start. If you're looking for a little shorter brim, brim up, brim down. This hat comes in felt, just, I also did a video on this lately. The felt version is nice. One and three quarter inch sounds tiny, but it's, it's just good. It looks kind of like this, it's similar. Um, the Asher comes in black, gray, tan, sage green, a nice navy blue called true blue. Um, there's a lot of colors. Uh, Cordobo brown, black, navy, gray, tan, and sage, I think. Sometimes we get a silver belly occasionally. We water them. Um, that's the short brim look, and it's awesome. I would do Stetson Asher's, like, just buy them. You know, they look good on a lot of people. Um, you know, if you have a small face, you're a smaller guy, go with a smaller hat. If you're a little bigger, you know, you could wear something else. Um, don't only think that two and a half inch brims are the way to go, is what I'm saying. There's a lot of cool stuff out there. Um, now let's go in the other end of the spectrum. The three inch brim is going to be like this one here. It's an uh, oversized brim. The three is cool. It's very in right now. We have a hat called the Madrid, which is probably the most like fashionable fedora we have. You're looking for something cool and fashionable and hot and in, like all the guys are wearing to like the Grammy Awards now and stuff. The threes are good. Uh, we have a really nice caramel color like a whiskey and in the uh, Madrid. We also have a color called Plum, which is between charcoal gray and a super dark purple. It's almost like, looks like dark gray or, or something like a muted navy. At a distance you get closer, you see it's like a grayish purple. Like an aubergine, somewhere between a dark 
like a wine color, a purple, and like a grayish, like a almost like a battleship gray. It's like muted, dusty purple. Awesome. And the whiskey too. So three inch brims are, are, are just killer. You could do them brim down, you could do them brim up. If you're a big guy, it's awesome. Um, it's a little tight on me because my hair is tied back now, but uh, I'm just saying the the three is awesome. It's really in style now. This is something like a three, but it's a little bigger. It's like a three and a quarter. Um, flat brims now are also a trend. It started about five, ten years ago. We were doing custom hats like this with a big, you know, now Stetson sort of copied them and a lot of people. This guy in LA is also famous for, for making them. Um, so you don't have to go custom anymore for hats like this. Stetson does make it, the Tri-City, this and that. And they're coming out with a whole line of flat brim hats this fall, so. This is bigger. Once you go past three, it's it becomes edgier, you know. You know, we're talking three and a quarter, three and a half, even four. This is, I don't know, three and a quarter, something like that. So um, brim size does matter. It's going to give you the whole image. It's going to put out the entire vibe for your hat. So when you're looking for a hat, first thing you do is obviously you get your size. You've got to nail your size first. Measure, measure, measure. Measure it two, three, four, five times. Uh, measuring is almost like taking your temperature. It comes out a little different every time. So you do it like five times and then average it out. Um, get a tape measure, go at your brow bone. The widest part of your head is at the brow. That's where you measure right above the ear. Not touching the ear, but as close to the ear as you can get it without touching, okay? The widest part of your head at the brow bone. Go around, pull the tape measure as tight as a hat should fit. In other words, don't pull it tight like a tourniquet and don't let it fall down all loose. Let it go just snug, nice and snug, like a good supportive pair of shoes or something, you know, the way you want your hat to fit. Think about that. When you tighten tape measure, think about exactly how tight you want your hat to fit and feel, you know, adjust it accordingly so it feels that amount of tightness. And be very careful with your fingers when you're finding these spots. Hold it and don't just round it off to the nearest quarter or whatever. Go to centimeters or to eighth of an inch. Be as um, accurate as you can because uh, between you know one inch and, and the next inch there's like four or five different hat sizes so you got to be super accurate and that's also why you do it five times and average it out okay just do it stop start again measure again okay get very precise if you're between sizes round it to the bigger eighth of an inch or to the bigger centimeter centimeters would be more logical if you're doing it just measure it with whatever you have inches eighth of an inch i mean four centimeters and then just go to google say go to google image and do hat size chart that's it google image hat size chart you'll see it like a whole bunch of hat size charts they're all the same um and try to find out what your centimeter measurement or your inch measurement is translate it remember always round higher never round to the smallest even if you're a little bit past something go to the bigger one okay because you never want to buy a hat too tight you always want to buy it a little loose and pad down if you're between sizes worst thing you can do is buy a hat too tight it's just a waste of money and you're struggling and writing me notes how can i fix this and stretch it don't get yourself in that situation all right make it bigger it's easy to stick a little piece of foam underneath the leather in there. You forget it's there. You never know it's there. And that's how you fine tune your hat. You might need to make your hats bigger and smaller throughout its lifetime and adjust it. If it's on the small side, you have no flexibility. If it's a little bit big, you could put a one inch piece of foam in there, a two inch piece, a six inch. You could take it all out. That way you could adjust it bigger or smaller according to your hair, according to whatever. If it shrinks at one point, think about that. Hmm? Good shrink. Anyway, listen to what I said. You guys take care.